Hey guys, Phil here with Tennis Unlocked, and this is the video series where I take outrageous and spectacular shots that pros hit on their first try in major tournaments, and I see how many tries it takes me to complete them. I'll show you how you can practice these shots on your own, and what I learned along the way, and hopefully it's going to help you improve your game. Let's get into it. Well, that's a, an insane angle off the court. Wow, so this is just an unbelievable shot from Roger here in the 2004 U.S. Open Final against Leighton Hewitt. He beat Agassi and Henman to get here, and he swept Hewitt in straight sets. And he hits this sweet cross-court short-angled forehand. Awesome shot. Let's take a look at how this goes down. So we got Roger on the left side of the court here. We got Hewitt in the middle of the court over on his side. Roger's going to hit a forehand. To the open court over here so here's rogers forehand to the open court nice and deep hewitt retreating on the defensive struggles to get to it but gets to it and hits a defensive shot right over the mid low part of the net middle of the court here uh with high clearance over the net and uh the problem with that is uh even though it's a good defensive shot it's short in the court, barely past the service line, not even close to the sideline, and Roger is just going to eat this up with a sweet forehand cross court. Wow, that's so cool. So I'm going to attempt to replicate this shot on my own. Look where Hewitt is. This is so crazy. He is right here. And Roger's ball lands right about here. Hewitt still can't get to it because the ball is tailing so much off of the court. Look at that. Hewitt's right there. Still can't get to it. <laughs> That's cool. Here we go again. Forehand open court. Short in the court. And look at that. It's right in Roger's strike zone. He's got the open chest open body and he's just gonna whip this with height on it so it dips over the net short angle right here into the court no nope, sorry Hewitt <laughs> so let's take a look at Roger's footwork so we get a better understanding of how to approach this shot so here Roger hits his forehand to the open court he's gonna do a little jump step before Hewitt gets to the ball and you're going to see Roger start leaning to the right. He leans to the right, and from behind the baseline, he takes a big step with his left foot into the court, plants his right, little bit of hop here. Now he's going to land on his right foot, push off into the court with his left, start moving into the net just in case Hewitt gets to this ball. And he does a little hop step here in case he has to hit a volley. If Hewitt would have gotten to that he would have popped it up and Roger would have had an easy volley to the open court but it was not the case so that is the footwork for this shot all right guys let's take a closer look at Roger's swing here so he starts moving into the court and he's gonna take his racket back as the ball is coming over the net he's gonna take it back high so he can drop it low and create a big whipping motion so he starts with the racket high now he's gonna bring his racket low flat against the ground big wrist cock so he can whip the racket around the ball and finish across his body notice where the, the follow-through is it's below the white line on his shoulder that's the signature roger follow through most people finish over their shoulder but roger because of that motion can create so much more movement on the ball so let's take a look at where we're going to position our cones for this shot the first cone is going to be where roger does his little jump step and starts moving into the court second cone is going to be where roger makes contact with the ball third cone is going to be where the ball bounces into the court and the fourth cone is where it takes its second bounce. We're going to use that to make sure that we're getting the proper angle on this shot. Let's get out to the court and see what we can do. All right, guys, so we're on the court here. We're trying to replicate Roger's shot from the US Open. I have my cone set up here. The first cone, again, is where Roger starts his shot. So he does his jump step here, 
and he starts leaning towards the right, crossing over with his left. So we're gonna do our jump step in here. We're gonna cross over with our left. I put a couple pieces of masking tape here and I recommend you do the same thing. You put them on the cord, they come off real easy, doesn't leave any marks or anything. And you put them down where the feet are supposed to land for both your left and right foot. So the first piece of masking tape, hopefully you can see it on the video right there, is gonna be your left foot. Second piece gonna be the right foot. This piece right here is where I'm trying to throw the ball so that I can make contact with it uh, at about chest level. Cause I, I looked at the video and Roger makes contact with the ball at about chest level here. So I'm trying to toss the ball from here high enough, right about there, so that when I get there, the ball is at about chest level and uh, I can try and replicate the shot somewhat similar to what Roger does on his shot. So I suggest that you rehearse the, uh, the footwork before you start this shot. And you should actually try and do a couple of rehearsals from the point of contact. So eliminating this first portion of the shot right here. Let's say we're just doing our left, right, and the ball is bouncing here, chest high, and see if you can get the last portion of the shot first before incorporating the uh, beginning portion of the shot. So let's try a couple of rehearsals just with the last two pieces of footwork on this shot and see if we can get a couple of shots to just dip over the net so we get a feeling for what this shot is gonna look like. So again, we're starting here and now we do our left, right. The ball is gonna be about chest high. Not bad. Try another one, chest high. Dumped it in the net. So what I'm going for here is Anywhere short and left of that cone is gonna be a good shot. That's what I'm gonna consider uh, a good shot in this video. If it's beyond the cone or to the right of the cone, then it's not gonna be considered uh, a make on the attempt. So you really wanna get a feel for how this shot is gonna, is gonna feel when you're, when you're hitting it. So left, right, that one was a little better. And then we're also gonna be moving in like Roger does. So you, uh, you have to get all these different components. I suggest you get all these different components individually before you start doing them all together. And uh, these little pieces of tape here really help out. So let's try and see how many attempts it's gonna take us to uh, semi-replicate Roger shot. All right guys, so I took a couple practice warm-up shots. Now I'm actually gonna attempt to see how many attempts it takes to uh, replicate this shot. So again, we have our starting position right here with the cone. So we do our jump step. I'm gonna attempt to toss the ball about where that uh, piece of masking tape is. And let's see how many attempts it takes us to replicate this shot. See if we can learn something along the way. <laughs> All right, here we go. So jump step, toss, plant, left, right. Okay, so that one was dumped into the net. So on that one, I felt like I came way over the ball. I think I need to come a little lower in order to get that dipping motion over the net short. Let's see. Here we go. Jump step, toss, left, right. Oh, that was better, but it was a little bit long. Uh, I hit it aggressively uh, and I went after it, which was good, but uh, I think you need to take a little bit of the pace off of this ball uh, in order to get it to spin more. You know, you're not trying to hit it hard. You're trying to get the, uh, all the, the racket head speed turned into spin rather than flat pace. So that one was decent. That was attempt number two, I believe. Let's try attempt number three here. Jump step. Right. Oh, not bad. I'm getting them inside of the back cone, but I'm hitting them a little long because I feel like I'm hitting them a little too flat and a little too hard. So I really want to try and get this 
upward uh, spinning motion. And what I think Roger does in his shot is he comes left, right, and he does a little hop step here before coming in on the shot. So let me try to do that. See if that helps out a little bit on the shot. All right, so plant, left, right. Okay, that was a bad toss. If it's a bad toss, I'm not even counting it as an attempt. Here we go. Oh, that was pretty good. Just a little bit long. So I need even more spin on this shot. Let's give it another go. Plant. Okay. On that one, I had more spin, but uh, it was out. No good. Here we go. Plant, toss, right. Again, more spin, but too long. I think I need to uh, address this from here. So what do I need here? That's what we're looking for. So I didn't even have to hit that one hard in order to get it to dip over. But uh, because you have all this movement incorporated into this shot, that's what makes it so difficult. And this big left step here at the beginning also makes it difficult. You'll notice when you're doing this shot, to get from here with your left foot all the way to here, it's quite a journey. And then you get here and all your momentum is moving this way so you need to plant your feet stop i need to stop here come over the ball and then start moving into the court so let's try and correct a couple of these here all right so jump step toss left right oh there it is Whew. i got one <laughs> i don't know what attempt that was but uh, that one was short of the cone and left of the cone, and it went into the fence uh, on the left side of the back cone where Hewitt was. So that took a few attempts in order to get um, everything right, but uh, I did manage to, and I think when I hit the shot, I did do a little jump here and then pushed off into the court, which is something I wasn't doing on the earlier shots so i think that's definitely part of this shot is when you get here left right when you're here a little bit of a jump as you're coming in make sure you stop hit the ball first and then come in but uh now i understand why roger does that little jump as he's hitting the shot because it's very difficult to get the ball to dip over and get that angle that short angle if you're not doing that little jump at the end of your shot so hopefully you guys learned something from this i'm going to try and do a couple from the other side of the court uh, to give you a different angle on the shot all right guys so i basically set up the cones on the other side of the court i just mirrored what we had over on this side of the court uh, I couldn't film from the other side because uh, the sun. So to give you a better angle, I set up everything over there. I'm going to hit a bucket of balls. I probably have 20, 30 balls in there. See how many of them I can get into the target area. So the target area, again, for this shot is anything short of the cone. So anything short in here or anything uh, short and left of this cone. So anything within this box right here is a good shot and anything outside of this uh, cone is not a good shot so the reason that this is important is roger hits his ball uh, at a short angle from the right side of the court over there his ball probably comes five or six inches over the net as it's coming over the net here with a lot of spin and it ends up landing where this cone is and going towards the other cone. Now, the reason that uh, we're trying to get inside of this cone as opposed to outside of this cone is because 
very minor differences in where the ball lands here make very big differences where the ball ends up on the other side of the court. So one of the main reasons that Hewitt wasn't able to get to that ball is because Roger's ball had so much spin on it and the angle was so acute. So what I mean by that is if the ball lands inside of this cone, it's gonna be going towards the fence. Now, if the ball lands outside of this cone, I mean, it's only about a foot here difference from inside to outside. If it lands outside of this cone, it's gonna be going over there. So you have a very big discrepancy in where the ball ends up uh, over there compared to where the ball lands here. So that's why the position of the landing spot is very important because by the, ball, by the time the ball gets to the end of the court, it's gonna grow the uh, amount of angle and the amount of distance that your opponent has to run. So let's try a couple of these shots. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As you saw, this is a pretty difficult shot that Roger hit here. I would say that the success rate for me was probably around 10, 15%, maybe 10 or 15 out of 100 that I got into that perfect landing area that uh, Roger landed in. So it's a shot that I'm gonna need to work on to get better at. It's a shot that you should get out on the court and practice yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe below for weekly content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.